There was a young lady by the name of Mary Roth uh, that was born uh, in the mid-1800s. Uh, and um, by the age of six months, she uh, began to have uh, some seizures. At that time, they referred to them as fits. Mary Roth had a very troubled childhood. She had fits from an early age. From about the age of six months to about 19, she would have these uh, episodes. This went on for quite some time, for months, and the spells and the seizures grew worse and worse over time. Fits in which she spoke in foreign tongues, languages she couldn't possibly know. Annalise Michelle goes back to her case. She was actually a very devout, very devout Catholic, but yet she had uh, an illness to a point where uh, she had to take medication uh, and it opened her up to unfortunately receive uh, demonic attacks. <laughs> I was possessed when I was 13 years old. It took a long time and it was difficult for me to breathe. I had something like, why I can't breathe? I had it very, very, very much in that time. And then she told me, don't you have problems with breathing, Davy?" And then I said, I actually do. I have a lot of problems with breathing at the moment also. And then she told me, that's because, that's because you have a demon hanging around your neck. Mary Roth was a very troubled young girl. Mary became a raving maniac of the most violent kind. She became increasingly violent, and then she also began showing uh, behaviors such as uh, being able to read through envelopes uh, or discern through uh, objects and uh, showing the characteristics of a clairvoyant. Clairvoyancy, that's the ability to be able to communicate with the other side. She was actually able to read things through bandages, sealed envelopes. She was able to read books without even opening them. She was very well tapped in to the spirit world. What do you know about the Mary Roth house? I just know that Mary Roth, the beginning of the story, tell, there was something, she was sick, and they used leeches or some the right. old school. In the early days of modern medicine, uh, bleeding was actually used to try to balance the, the minds and, and the bodies of, of people that were either physically or mentally ill. Doctors would apply leeches to their uh, faces, to their temples, or other parts of their bodies, and then the leeches would be allowed to actually drain blood from the people who were sick. Mary had done bloodletting on herself, so she would take leeches and apply them to her skin because she claimed that she had a pain in her head that she wanted to have dissolved. Mary Roth would apply leeches to her temples and found great pleasure in this, treating them like her little pets. The most interesting thing about Mary is that she had an obsession with blood, her blood. Mary was obsessed with bloodletting. She would cut herself to drain all her blood. One time she ran out in the backyard and took a knife to her forearm and began slicing herself open.
Helen had a daughter named Kelly. Uh, was a normal child, a uh, normal teenager. Uh, that girl went through what can only be classified as a possession. She started changing a lot. She was having trouble at school. Her personality just changed. Kelly would, uh, would stand in the middle of the night standing and staring at her parents. It was obvious, you know, by the look in her eye and the thoughts that she was having that she wanted to kill her family. I kept getting this feeling like I was worthless. There was nothing for me left to do but just kill myself. And She began cutting herself, uh, cuts that were not to relieve any sort of pain that she was going through. The cuts were she felt that if she harmed herself, she wouldn't have to harm her parents. I tried cutting my arms and taking lots of pills. Did it hurt it when you cut? No. Not at all? Did no. you cut it deep? Yeah, I cut them pretty deep. They started, got so bad where it started scarring up my arms and I tried covering them up so that way no one's seen them. With nothing but herself in the room, she began to tear the flesh off her arms with her own fingers. When they caught her and they saw what was happening, they couldn't believe that the skin and the flesh was just hanging on her arms. I used to cut myself when I was possessed. I remember waking up and that my bed was full of blood. And I don't even remember what happened. I just know that there was laying a razor beside my bed. I woke up and I saw everywhere blood on my arms, on the sheets. I cut myself with a razor blade with glass, everything that was sharp enough to cut myself and to make myself bleed. So when you, so I'm just trying to imagine, when you cut your arm, did it, you didn't feel the pain at all? No, it, it felt good. It just felt like all my stress and all that was just leaving Oh, my you're body. releasing the, the stress. My mother cried. If I cut myself and I would laugh very mean at her and it felt healthy to cut myself I became obsessed with seeing my own blood if I saw my own blood it felt satisfying something in me screamed that I shouldn't do it sometimes it was just to cut it and release and let it out and then sometimes it was do it deeper do it harder you know what was telling you? was it something else somebody it was something like somebody telling a, you to do that yeah it's just like a feeling just I kept getting that. I should do this. Yeah, like a push, do just do it, do it, do it. After that fit, where she cut her arm, she went into a very violent seizure or fit, and it lasted several days, and five men had to restrain her to keep her down and keep her in bed. Although her weight was only about 100 pounds and she had lost nearly all her blood. Now with this whole type of situation, the little girl also had gained a tremendous amount of strength and when that would happen, it would take four to five people to be able to hold her down and restrain her from her actually hurting herself. 